Hey everybody, today is going to be a short little video. I'm gonna be demoing this. This is the Procreate 5.x Beta. Later this year, they're gonna be rolling this out as a free update to anybody who already has the program. And one thing I learned from last year's beta is that some things are gonna change between now and when the software is released. Last year, it wasn't, wasn't like these really big, huge things. It was just little interface things like how you set a background layer and animation and stuff like that. So I do want to say that as a disclaimer here, you probably are going to see a couple things change, just some little stuff, but I think the core features that they're working on, all of that is here. I've only been poking around for about a day, day and a half now, so I'm probably going to miss one or two things, but I think the big stuff, I think we're going to cover that. Before I talk about what is here, I want to talk a, a little bit about what isn't here. I was getting some questions about some of the features, especially animation features that may may have added like can we make longer movies now or are there uh is there the ability to add audio right now all we have are the same animation assist features that we had last year this is an animation from my uh, procreate course links down below if you want a discount to that but this is basically the same as last year same timeline same animation assist you know same features same setting and all that sort of thing. So with that out of the way, what exactly have they changed? My favorite thing that they've added this year are some of the text effects that are new to iOS 14. They've added them here in Procreate as well. So if you're on a text layer, I can come in here with my pencil and I can select a word just by swiping the pencil over it. I could select two words. If I wanna get rid of one of the words, I can just kind of scribble it out. And if I wanna add a word, I could say cut, uh, I don't want to say cut. Let's get rid of that word. And let's just type in hello, H-E-L-L-O. And then it's going to recognize that and just pop it in there. Now, you may have noticed while we were in here before, I'll select that again, this little dialog pops up. So we can clear it. We can cut it. There's things like uh, aligning our text in different ways. We can align it to the right. We can center align it. We can change the font. So many of those features are, are right here already. If you don't want to write and you would prefer to have a keyboard, there is like a little mini keyboard in this dialog down here that you can pull up. Also, there are some options that aren't in this. Many of the options, some of the core options are. But for example, I want this to be all capitalized. I can still bring up the old dialog and get all of the options here. Change the kerning and the tracking, all that sort of thing. These features also work on the layer panel. Let me pull up the layer panel. So if I come here, anywhere where there is text, I can come in here and uh, let me double tap, go to rename, and I could scribble that out. And now I could just rename that layer. I'll call it top layer. My handwriting is horrible. Let's see if it recognizes it. Hey, spelled it right. I'm really enjoying that because it keeps me in the workflow of not having to put down the pencil, type something out, pick up the pencil. It's, it's all done right here just with one tool. The other big change is this little magic wand up here, our adjustment layers. The other big change we have this year is up here, this little magic wand that brings up our adjustments. Now this is going to look a little bit different. Uh, what I did is I did a screen cap of the new one and a screen cap of the old one. So you can see that here. You can see there's more stuff here. Basically what they've done is they've taken some of the old menu things and they've rearranged them. They've grouped them into different chunks. So some of the new stuff they've added here is like the cinematic arboration, the halftone, the glitch, the bloom. I think that's it. Everything else here. Oh no, there's also gradient map that they added. So they got rid of recolor and they've replaced it with gradient map. So let me jump to another image and let's start playing around with some of this stuff. I'm going to go here. Let me go to my adjustments. And even some of the old stuff has some new features. So for example, if I tap on Gaussian blur in the past, the whole thing affected the layer, but you see what happened here. We have layer and we have pencil, which means I can take any of these adjustments and apply them to the entire layer like we've always been able to do, or I can just use my pencil to apply them that way. So for example, I wanna blur out the shadow underneath my box here. In the past, I'd have my layer and I just slide up on there and my hand's blocking it a little bit, but there you see now it's kind of blurry. Uh, and then anywhere now I can just tap on the canvas and it's going to bring up this little menu and I could say, Hey, reset it or undo it if you don't want that. But what we want to check out 
is Gaussian blur, and then I'm gonna tap on pencil. Now it's not applying it on the layer, it's just going to apply it wherever I use my pencil. So if I want a bigger brush here, you can see that's getting blurred out wherever I draw, so I can kind of hand blur it if I want. Which is nice, because you can apply it in one area or a larger area, you just have more control. But where it gets really cool is it's dependent on the brush you're using. So right now I'm using a boring inking brush. But say I grab an airbrush, like my big soft brush. This is like a three dimensional shape, there's a shadow on it. So I want the shadow to be crisp over here and get blurrier as I go. Well, with this, with this brush, I could do that. I could just kind of apply the blur over here like that. And there we go. As I'm moving away from it, it's getting blurrier. So here I am in another image. I wanna play with some of the other effects that we have here. First of all, let's jump over to gradient map and see how that works. I'm gonna use the layer and down below, it brings up our gradient library and it gives you a bunch of these off the bat, but you could always go in here and I'll just switch between them so you could see what's happening. It's basically changing the entire color spectrum of, of that whole layer. But let me hit the plus button here and you can see it creates its own gradient. So this is creating this kind of black and white thing and I could scrub it over and change that. I can double tap anywhere and grab a different color. So that mid tone, maybe I put somewhere else. Let me grab maybe a lighter color in my middles and then I can push these to kind of wherever I want them to go. So you could jump in and create your own gradient maps. There we go, we'll click done. And this is a really fun way to come in here and recolor. And of course I can always come in here and just cancel it really easily. Next up, let's go take a look at Bloom. I'm gonna do this on the layer as well. And what this is gonna do as I slide up, you see my blue line moving, you also see basically the lighter areas kind of starting to glow, starting to really kind of pop out, giving me that like, well, I guess it's the bloom effect, right? And of course we can come in here and we can adjust the size and make it bigger. We could make it smaller. Let's kind of keep it around, where was it? 30 looks pretty good. And then we could also adjust the burn in like, oh, we're really looking at the sun here. Let's check out another one. Let's undo this and go up here. And next up, I wanna check out Glitch. Let's attach our layer. This has several different sections to it. Uh, first of all, we have Artifact. Uh, this was something that they previewed on Twitter and it was kind of funny because people were trying to figure out what on earth is Procreate doing. But that's just, whoa, that's really funky. That's kind of a cool thing. There's also this wave effect. Oh, interesting. This could be fun to like actually record the screen and use this as like as a video effect or something like that. Let me undo that. Signal, what does signal do? Signal's kind of an old TV type thing. Oh, that's neat. Undo that. And the last one is diverge. And of course, any of these, you can come in here and you can change like your red shift, your green shift, your blue shift, and all of that stuff. So tap once, cancel it. Next up, we're getting to one of my favorites here. We're gonna play with halftone a little bit. This is gonna give me some old uh, comic book effects. And as I come in here, it's gonna give you that effect of comics being printed on kind of crummy newsprint. And this is neat. I, I think it's a little too intense, but I could see myself like, duplicating that layer, coming in here, going to half tone, turning it on on the layer. Really, let me let me get it to something I like. That's probably too much. Kind of cranking it up, but then actually changing the transparency of it a little bit. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it adds this really cool half tone effect that way. So it's not overwhelming, but it's just adds like a nice little texture to it. So the next one goes really well with these half tone dots. It is chromatic aberration. I said it right. Yeah. So what this is going to do is it's going to shift some of the colors. So again, this is going to be kind of that old newsprint feel. Let me slide it up. Hold on. It's not working. There we go. Let me slide it up. And you could see if I do it really bad, like the red shifts and then the green and the blue kind of shift away from each other. So it's taking that RGB spectrum and kind of blurring it out. That's a little too intense. But if you just knock it down a little bit, you get that slight blur. Right now, this is set to perspective. So the stuff that's further away is gonna be more blurred than the stuff that's closer. We could also do a displacement, which is a little bit different. Yeah, that's just gonna straight up, you know, move this stuff around. Woo, that is funky. But uh, yeah, you could actually just come in here and manually do that. I think there's some blurring you could do as well if you wanted to do it that way. Anyway, some really cool stuff in these adjustment layers. So the other thing that I wanted to check out 
is up here in our little wrench. Uh, if we go to Canvas, there's this. It is called Reference. So let's go ahead and turn that on. And what this basically becomes is a little like reference point for your drawing. So you can see your drawing in there. So if I'm zooming in, you know, and if I'm coloring on his beard or something like that, and I want to grab a color from over here, I can tap and hold on my reference image, grab the color I need and keep painting without having to zoom out, sample, zoom back in. Also, it gives me kind of a sense of how this is looking in my composition, because sometimes when you get in and you're doing the fiddly bits, you come to realize once you zoom out, you can't see the fiddly bits. And it's not just the canvas that can be a reference. You can tap down here and you can import an image. And the other thing you could do is this face button. I'm not sure what it's for, but basically what it does is when you tap on it, it looks for your face and it maps the illustration to your face. Yeah, that's right. I gave myself a mouse stash. So that's about it. There's some other little things that I've noticed. For example, like the copy paste menu has changed and you can actually change the location of where it appears. There's some other little interface things that I've noticed here and there, but for the most part, those are the big things that have changed to Procreate 5X. So what do you think about the update? Let me know down below in the comments. And don't forget, I have discounts to all my Procreate courses and all my other courses down below in that description. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.